Hello and welcome to GD Life at PALS with teacher Alex. The subject is GD Science and the topic Relationships in Ecosystems. We will talk about carrying capacity, predator and prey relationships and symbiotic relationships, specifically the three forms mutualism, commensalism and parasitism. Carrying capacity. A population is a group of organisms of the same species living in the same area at the same time. The carrying capacity of a population is the maximum number of organisms that a particular environment or ecosystem can support over time of that species. For example, when, a population, uh, when populations are less than the carrying capacity of a particular environment, births will exceed deaths until the carrying capacity is reached. The graph on the right illustrates a population with a constant but limited food supply. During the lag phase, the population size grows very slowly and organisms mature and adapt to the environment. Additionally, there are very few organisms, so it takes time to pick up the rate of reproduction. When food is plentiful, the population grows quickly. We see the exponential growth phase here. And when the population size outgrows the amount of available food, growth begins to plateau. It becomes stationary, the stationary phase, in which the carrying capacity of the population is reached. Here, the birth rate is now equal to the death rate. Very often a population will overshoot the carrying capacity and continue to grow exponentially, but then collapse because not enough supplies are available to support the population, the large number, since they are above the carrying capacity. This will lead to a rapid decline, a lot of deaths, less births, and the population will fall below its carrying capacity. Then the reproduction reproductive rate will pick up again and it takes some time until a population slowly balances around the carrying capacity of an environment. Let's have a look at limiting factors that limit the size of populations. The diagram shows six factors that can limit population size. For example, if competition between members of a species or individuals of different species for food or space increases, the population size will decrease. Other limiting factors can include the effects of disease, changes in the amount of available space or light, and other environmental effects. Factors that usually increase the population size are births, food availability, and migrating uh, individuals into the population, factors that decrease population size, are competition, emigration, organisms, individuals moving out of the population into a different population, and deaths. Predator and prey relationships are those in which one organism, the predator, feeds on another, the prey. These relationships help ecosystems function properly. Remember that energy is moved through an ecosystem by way of food webs or food chains. If you haven't watched that video yet, I would highly recommend you to watch energy flow in ecosystem as well. Predation ensures that the flow of energy continues, but it can also be a limiting factor on population size. In the graph on the right, we can see that the prey population declines sharply many times. Each decline is followed by a crash of the predator population as well. We can see a decline here in the prey. Shortly after that, the predators decline too. A decline of the prey population here and shortly after a decline of the predator population. This is because of the reduced source of food for the predator once the prey population has declined rapidly. As a result of the reduced predator population, the prey population can rebound because now 
the pressure on the prey population is less. There are less predators around. So it's more likely for the prey individuals to survive and reproduce. The number of prey rises again. This is followed by a rise in the predator numbers because now there are only a few predators but there's plenty of food for them available. So they can catch more prey, get more food, their ability to survive and reproduce increases and the number of predators will increase. If the number of predators is high, they will hunt down a lot of prey which causes a lot of pressure on the prey population and the prey population will decline. This causes a scarcity of food for the predator population and the predator population declines shortly after. Predator and prey relationships are important for the health of natural populations. Usually it is the young, old or the injured members of a population that are caught by predators. Predation restricts the size of the prey population within the limits of the resources that are available. Another type of relationship that impacts many species' survival is symbiosis. Symbiotic relationships occur when there are close and long-term associations between members of different species. These symbiotic relationships usually evolve over long periods of time by co-evolution. There are three different types of symbiosis that we will have a look at here. One is parasitism. In parasitism, the relationship um, between the organisms is such that one organism, the parasite, benefits while the other organism, the host, is harmed. Examples are tapeworms living in the intestines of other organisms like cats, dogs, or even humans or ticks living on a dog or a cat or lice or fleas. These are examples of two different types of parasites. Tapeworms are so-called endoparasites because they live inside their host, whereas ticks, fleas or lice are so-called ectoparasites because they, leave, li they live on the outside of their host. Mutualism. This is a relationship in which both species in the symbiotic uh, relationship benefit from each other. An example are ants living in and, protect, in and protecting an acacia tree, or clownfish living in a sea anemone, or bees pollinating flowers. In all these relationships, both organisms benefit. Commensalism. This is a relationship in which one species benefits and the other species is neither harmed nor benefited. Hermit crabs using gastropod shells for shelter. The gastropods are already dead, but they leave their shells behind, which the hermit crabs can use. Spiders building webs on plants. The plants are not affected by that, but the spiders benefit. Another example are so-called epiphytes, smaller plants that grow on big trees and rainforests. The big trees are not affected by these relationships, but the smaller plants benefit since they are closer to the light. Let's have a look at some questions. Place an X on the diagram to indicate the correct location of the slow growth phase. The slow growth phase is at the start. It is as well called the lag phase before the population enters the exponential growth where it rapidly increases. The nature, the ecosystem, the environment can support a lot more organisms. The numbers of the population are big enough to allow exponential growth then the curve will start to flatten around the carrying capacity, which is the maximum number of individuals of the population that can be supported
by the environment due to limiting factors such as the availability of food or water or other things. Second question. When populations increase and use up the available resources, the result can be disease, competition, exponential growth or more available food. The correct answer here is competition. When populations increase, that means available resources become more scarce, which means individuals need to fight for these resources. They will compete for these resources. A goby fish sometimes lives together with a shrimp. The shrimp digs and cleans up a burrow in the sand, and both the fish and the shrimp live in the burrow. The shrimp is almost blind and at risk of being eaten when above ground. The goby fish will touch the shrimp when its tail, with its tail to warn it of danger. And then both will retreat into the burrow. Complete the statement with a term from the section. When the shrimp is above ground, it takes on the role of what the predator or prey in this relationship. The correct answer is the prey. What type of relationship exists between the goby fish and the shrimp? A parasitic relationship, a mutual relationship, a predator-prey or a commensal relationship? The correct answer here is a mutual relationship. The shrimp builds the burrow and digs the burrow in which both goby and shrimp can seek shelter. The shrimp is blind and thus at very high risk of being found and eaten by a predator above ground. So the goby fish will warn the shrimp by touching it if a predator is nearing. In this way both goby fish and shrimp benefit from their relationship. This was GD Live at PALS with teacher Alex. The subject was GD Science and the topic was relationships in ecosystems.